Hello students, how are you all? I hope you all are keeping well. So I am Priyanka Singh, your science teacher. Today I am here to start with the chapter number 2 of 8th class that is microorganisms. So let's start this topic. We are surrounded by numerous living organisms around us. Some of these organisms are visible while some are not. Those organisms which are not visible to unaided eye but can only be viewed under a microscope are called microorganisms. The study of such microorganisms is called microbiology. Microorganisms are found in air, water, soil and even inside our bodies. They can be found in sandy deserts, cold ice caves, fertile plains, hot springs, lakes, ponds, wells, almost everywhere they are found. Most of the microorganisms are harmful to us. However, there are many that are useful to us as well. Many microorganisms can resist extreme climatic conditions as well. However, those which cannot resist form a hard covering around themselves called the cyst. The first scientist to study microorganisms under a self-made microscope was Antoine Quen Leeuwenhoek. Microorganisms or microbes. Our earth is home to a huge variety of living organisms. The three realms of the earth that is lithosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere are the habitats for different forms of life among all forms of living organism existing on the earth. There are some that can be seen with naked eye, whereas there are several others which cannot be seen with naked eyes. The living organisms that cannot be seen with naked eyes are called microorganisms. They are so small in size that we need a microscope to view them. Their existence in nature came to be known after the discovery of cell by Robert Hooke in 1665. Anthony Vaughan, Leeuwenhoek observed the first living cell in a drop of pond water. The organisms he observed were bacteria. Later in 1857, Louis Pasteur proposed the germ theory and concept of vaccination which laid the foundation of microbiology. Microbiology is a branch of science that deals with the study of microorganisms. Louis Pasteur is known as the father of microbiology. He discovered important vaccines like those for rabies and anthrax. He also developed the technique of pasteurization to prevent the spoilage of milk. In the process, milk is heated to a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius and then immediately cooled to kill the lactobacillus bacteria present in it. These bacteria are responsible for curdling or spoilage of milk. The discovery of tubercle bacillus, the causative agent of tuberculosis by Robert Koch in 1882, not only confirmed the germ theory proposed by Louis Pasteur but also gave impactors to the study of microbiology at depth and a large number of different microorganisms were thus discovered. Microorganisms except viruses have been found to be useful as well as harmful to men. This chapter deals with the study of different types of microorganisms. So these three pictures are the picture of scientists who gave their contribution in microbiology. The first one is Robert Hooke, second one is Antony von Leeuwenhoek and the third picture is Louis Pasteur. So children, it's time to see an activity. So to observe the microorganisms under a microscope, place the cover slip on the drop of pond water. Using the higher magnification of the microscope, observe the water drop, record your observations. So, in this activity, this picture is showing microorganisms in pond water. When a drop of pond water is observed using a microscope, under high magnification, tiny microorganisms appear 
appear to move from one place to another. They are mostly bacteria or protozoa present in water. Now we are moving towards the types of microbes. The microorganisms found on the earth differ from each other in several ways. The microorganisms have been classified into five different categories. They are viruses, bacteria, algae, fungi and protozoa. To study the different types of microorganisms, the best way is to culture them in laboratory using a proper nutrition medium at an optimum temperature. Microbes are generally found in air, water, land, deserts, hot water springs, marine waters inside the living organisms as parasites. Virus Virus is the smallest of all living organisms. They vary in their shape as well as their size that ranges from 0.015 to 0.2 micron. The viruses are extremely minute and can be observed only by using an electron microscope that magnifies an object by 2 lakh times. A virus lacks any cellular structures like cytoplasm and cell organelles. It consists strand of nucleic acid like DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid or RNA, ribonucleic acid surrounded by a protein layer called capsid. So these are the pictures of different types of viruses like HIV, Hepatitis B, Ebola virus, Adenovirus, Influenza, Rabies virus, Bacteriophage, Papilloma virus, Rotavirus, Herpes virus. These are the different types of virus. The virus carrying RNA is called retrovirus. Virus is alive and active only when inside a living host cell. It means that it is absolutely parasitic. Once inside a cell, it uses the host hot energy and nutrients to multiply uncontrollably and eventually the host cell dies. After the host cell dies, they are released in thousands to infect other healthy cells. However, outside a living host, the virus behaves as a non-living organism and can be crystallized like chemical salts. It acts as living only inside the host cell. It is for this reason that it is considered as a borderline between living and non-living. It is difficult to culture them and prepare vaccine for the diseases caused by them. A virus has been classified on the basis of the parasitic hosts. The three types of viruses are bacteriophages, plant viruses and animal viruses. In bacteriophage, the host is bacteria. In plant and animal viruses, the host are plants and animals respectively. The first virus to be discovered was TMV that is tobacco mosaic virus. It is a plant virus that infects tobacco plants. After the discovery of TMV, the study on virus was intensified. There are many diseases that are caused by virus. Example, smallpox, chickenpox, polio, rabies and AIDS. These days, microbiologists are making efforts to develop a vaccine for AIDS, that is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. AIDS is a fatal disease and is responsible for thousands of deaths worldwide. A few years ago, FMDV, foot and mouth disease virus, affected the cattle in African and European countries because of which the import and export of meat and its products was banned. Bacteria. Bacteria is called bacterium in its singular form. Bacteria are the simplest of all the microorganisms. They vary in their shape, size and habitat dwelling places. Their size ranges from 0.2 to 100 micron. The smallest bacteria known is 
0.15 micron whereas the largest is 1.5 micron in diameter and 15 micron in length 1 micron is equals to 1 by 10 mm or 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 meter many of them are free living and harmless others are useful bacteria are structurally different from all other organisms they are unicellular and do not have a well-defined nucleus the nuclear material is found suspended in cytoplasm the cells which do not have a well-defined nucleus are called prokaryotic cells and hence bacteria are prokaryotes so this is the picture of a typical bacterium with flagella bacteria unlike viruses possess cytoplasm that is viscous and colloidal in nature the cytoplasm is encompassed by a hard cell wall it is the presence of cell wall because of which bacteria are considered as borderline between plants and animals Sometimes while going through adverse conditions they develop another hard covering which is called cyst and the process of formation of cyst is called encystment. Some bacteria have hair like structures are flagella and are motile too. Classification of bacteria. On the basis of their shape bacteria have been classified into three types. They are as follows bacillus they are road shaped bacteria example lactobacillus bacillus and pseudomonas coccus they are round or oval shaped bacteria example streptococcus micrococcus and staphylococcus the third one is spiralum they are spiral cork screw or comma shaped bacteria example vibrio letospira spirocheta and treponema so these are the pictures of three bacterias that are bacillus coccus and spirillum a danish microbiologist developed a stain called gram stain that further help classify bacteria into two types gram stain imparts purple color to bacteria cell wall the bacteria that do not retain the purple color of the strain are called gram negative while those which retain the purple color are called gram positive the gram negative bacteria fails to retain the stains color due to the presence of an additional layer of lipopolysaccharide on their cell wall nutrition like all other organisms bacteria may be autotrophs or heterotrophs the autotrophic bacteria are of two types phototrophs phototropic bacteria contain chlorophyll and can manufacture their food on their own using sunlight like green plants chemotrophs chemotrophic bacteria for example sulfur bacteria utilize energy from the inorganic compounds the heterotrophic bacteria are either saprophytic or parasitic the saprophytic bacteria help decompose the dead organic matter into simple inorganic form such that it can be reused the parasitic bacteria thrive on other living cells causing diseases such as cholera tuberculosis etc symbiotic bacteria some bacteria live in symbiotic relation with other organisms for example the nitrogen fixing bacteria rhizobium lives in root nodules of leguminous plants and e coli bacteria is found in large intestines of man e coli bacteria synthesize vitamin k required by the body reproduction the bacteria very rapidly reproduce asexually through binary fission when the conditions of temperature, nutrition and pH are favorable. So this is the picture or a diagram which showing mode of reproduction in a bacterium. When a bacterium divides, its nuclear material divides first which is followed by cytokinesis that is the division of cytoplasm. The newly formed cells are called daughter cells. 
the time taken for cell division varies for different bacteria. However, normally bacteria takes about 20 minutes to divide under optimum conditions. It is because of the rapid rate of division that a single bacteria in a short time invades the body and develops a colony of millions. The rapid rate of bacterial division is both useful and harmful. Advantages and disadvantages of bacteria. The bacteria are both useful and harmful to humans. The bacteria are harmful to men in following ways. Causative agents of diseases. Bacteria are infectious and are responsible for causing many diseases for example cholera, typhoid, tuberculosis, leprosy etc. On entering the body they cause damage either by invading and destroying the cells or by producing toxins which harm the body. Both animals and plants are affected equally by bacteria. Food spoilage. Bacteria are responsible for the spoilage of food for example soaring of milk, rotting or putrefaction of fruits vegetables, meat and non-refrigerated food. So these two pictures are the picture which are showing bacteria cause many diseases in humans and the next picture is showing bacteria spoil fruits and vegetables etc. And in the third picture it is showing bacteria helps in production in biogas. Bacteria are of great economic value. Bacteria like E. coli in our large intestine produce vitamin K and B. They are useful to men in the following ways. They are cultured to prepare various types of antibiotics used in the treatment of diabetes medicines for patients is also manufactured using bacteria in pharmaceutical laboratories. They are important in fixation of atmospheric nitrogen. The rhizobium bacteria present in the root nodules of leguminous plants fixes the atmospheric nitrogen. Therefore, the cultivation of cereal crops is alternated with legume crops in order to maintain the soil fertility in crops rotation. They are important in the decomposition of organic matter. The decomposing action of bacteria helps in recycling of the different nutrients. Decomposition of sewage and generation of biogas. Thus, bacteria act as natural purifiers of nature and help in maintaining the soil fertility. Bacteria are useful in various industries also. They are used for the curdling of milk, production of cheese, vinegar, acetic acid, tea, coffee, cocoa, and in tanning of leather. So, there is another activity. Now, aim of the activity is to demonstrate that air contains spores of bacteria and fungi. Materials required a petri dish, agar gel, sugar, solution and a microscope. Procedure. Take a petri dish and put some agar gel in it. Pour some sugar solution on agar gel in the petri dish. Leave the solution open for few hours. Keep the petri dish in a dark and warm place and cover it. After few days, you will see some spots on agar gel. What do they represent? Observe them under the microscope and try to identify their different types. So, this is the picture which showing colonies of bacteria and fungi on sugar solution. Observation, these spots are colonies of bacteria and fungi. And the conclusion is, this activity shows that the spores of bacteria and fungi from air settled down on the agar plate. They grew into colonies that appear as spot in the petri dish. Mycoplasma. It is the smallest living cells. It is a group of microorganisms that resemble bacteria despite some visible differences. For example, they are small and spherical in shape. They lack a cell wall. They are both saprophytic and parasitic in their mode of nutrition. The mycoplasmas are present mostly in the form of colonies and are resistant to common antibiotics like penicillin. They are sensitive only to drugs such as tetracycline. 
Rickettsia. It is a family of microorganisms named after the American pathologist H. T. Rickett, who discovered them. They are road-shaped or spherical bacteria and are non-filtrable. They mostly live in arthropods and cause diseases in vertebrates. Some of the diseases caused by them include Alzheimer's disease and Vincent gingivitis. Algae. Algae are the simplest of all the plants. They have a well-defined nucleus and plastids. The chlorophyll present helps them manufacture their food on their own. They are aquatic in habitat and are thus found on moist surfaces such as near a tap, in ponds, lakes, rivers or sea water. An extra mile. Red Sea has got its name because of the presence of excessive red algae that give its water a reddish appearance. The algae differ in size and shape. The size of algae varies from few micron to many meters. For example, the algae name found in seawater grows to a length of about 60 to 70 meters wide. Unicellular algae Clemidomonas is only few microns in length. So these are the pictures which are showing different types of algae found in water reservoirs. The first one is red algae, second one is brown algae and the third one is green algae. On the basis of the pigment present in them, algae have been classified into three different types. They are green algae, example Spirogyra, red algae, example Polysiphonia and brown algae, example Fucus. The green algae have chlorophyll pigment and are green in color. The layer of scum seen floating on water surface in a pond or a ditch of water contains green algae. The red algae is red due to the presence of red pigment that is phycoerythrin. And brown algae is brown because it contains brown pigment that is phycocyanin. And Fucoxanthin. Some algae are blue green in color. The blue green algae bears some resemblance to bacteria and thus are called cyanobacteria. Some algae like Oscillatoria, Nostoc, and Anabena play a significant role in fixing an atmospheric nitrogen. They are found mostly in paddy fields. The algae play an important role as natural purifiers of air as they use carbon dioxide and release oxygen in atmosphere. They also act as primary producers in most of the aquatic food chains. In countries like Japan and China, certain types of algae are used as food. Algae are also important as we obtain a number of industrial products from them. Diatoms. The golden brown algae is rich in silica. We obtain silica from navicula, pinularia and cyclochella silica which is used for making filters, special types of glasses and porcelain. Kelps is another type of algae which is used to obtain iodine. Some red algae are rich source of Agar agar. Agar agar is a nutrient medium used to culture microorganisms in the laboratory. Algain, which is a type of carbohydrate, is obtained from the marine algae. It is used in the manufacture of medicines, shaving creams, and artificial fabrics. The overgrowth of algae in natural water reservoirs is also harmful as it results in eutrophication. When algae die, they cut off the direct contact of water with air. Their decomposition in water through bacterial action enhances the biochemical oxygen demand, that is BOD. The lack of oxygen in water results in the death of aquatic organisms. The increase in biochemical oxygen demand because of the overgrowth of algae. Algal bloom is called eutrophication. 
it happens mostly when the polluted water carrying fertilizers and pesticides or water overflowing from fields added into the water reservoir now to study the structure of green algae there is an activity visit a pond and collect some green scum floating on its surface wash the collected scum and place a little of it on a glass slide properly spread the mesh of the scum and observe it using a microscope record your observations in the form of a label diagram so this is a picture of green algae spirogyra in the above activity the scum when observed under the microscope shows the presence of algae having ribbon shaped green color chloroplast with starch granules as shown in above picture fungi these are a chlorophyllous plants which cannot manufacture their food on their own they are either saprophytic or parasitic in their nutritional habitat and cosmopolitan in their existence the fungi vary in their size from unicellular microscopic fungi like yeast and mildews to multicellular microscopic fungi such as mushrooms and yeast mushrooms are the largest group of fungi these two pictures are showing the yeast and the mushroom the saprophytic fungi along with bacteria play a vital role along with bacteria in recycling of matter in nature so this is the picture that is showing microscopic view of bread mold now we are moving towards the activity so the aim of this activity is to demonstrate formation of alcohol by yeast materials required a glass tumbler distilled water sugar and yeast powder now procedure take a glass tumbler and fill it up of 3/4 with warm distilled water add 3 to 4 teaspoon of sugar and half a teaspoon of yeast powder mix them to form a clear solution cover the beaker and leave it in a dark and warm place for 6 hours or more now smell the solution what type of smell do you get observation and conclusion the smell of alcohol indicates the presence of alcohol so this is a picture which is showing breakdown of sugar by yeast to form alcohol now there is another activity and the aim of this activity is to make dough soft and fluffy materials required half kilogram wheat flour a big bowl sugar yeast powder and water now procedure take the wheat flour in a bowl and 2 teaspoon of sugar and half a teaspoon of yeast powder baker's yeast mix nicely with the flour and knead with warm water to make a soft dough cover it with moist cloth and leave for 2 hours observation the dough has risen and become soft and fluffy they help decompose the dead organic matter into inorganic material necessary for maintaining the soil fertility their decomposition action is both useful as well as harmful for human beings under favorable conditions the spores of fungi like bread mold rhizopus germinate on food items and spoil them yeast is a unicellular saprophytic fungus it plays an important role in natural fermentation of sugar the carbon dioxide produced during the process helps makes the bread and cake soft and spongy The ethyl alcohol produced in fermentation is used to make alcoholic drinks like beers, wines, etc. C6H12O6 is sugar which gives 2C2H5OH ethyl alcohol plus 2CO2 that is carbon dioxide in the present of yeast and zymase so students there is another activity which is related to the study of the process of fermentation take two clean and hard glass test tubes take equal volume of grape juice in both the tubes add some yeast powder to one test tube and keep the other as 
control. Tightly close both the test tubes using rubber stoppers. After 5 to 6 hours, observe the contents of both the test tubes. Taste a little of grape juice from both and record the difference in the taste. The taste of the grape juice from test tube to which the yeast is added is different from the test tube kept as control. It is because of the process of fermentation that occurred due to the presence of yeast. Yeast is used in preparation of vitamin B complex. Some fungi decompose dead and decaying organic matter. The yeast along with bacteria acetobacter aceti is widely used in the manufacture of vinegar, acetic acid and cheese. When cultured, it reproduces rapidly by a sexual mode of reproduction called budding. The fungi like penicillium Notatum and streptomycin have great pharmaceutical value. Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin antibiotic which is used for treating a number of diseases in man. However, there are some fungi that are pathogenic both to plants and animals. Pathogenic fungi include the Paxinia which cause rust disease and Astilago which causes smut disease among plants like wheat. In human beings, the fungi such as Microsporium, Arthroderma, etc. cause diseases like ringworm infection and athlete's foot. So these are the pictures of harmful fungi. Black smut of wheat, brown rust of wheat, ringworm in humans. Protozoa, singular protozoan, mean the first animal. These are unicellular animals with well-defined nucleus and cell membrane. They are found either solitary or in colonies. They are cosmopolitan in their existence. These are the different types of protozoans. Amoeboids, Silates, Sporozoa, Flagellates. Most of the protozoans like Paramecium, Euglena, Traponosoma, Antamoeba, etc. are aquatic and motile. They have cilia or flagella as locomotory organs except a few like amoeba which have pseudopodia for locomotion. They live everywhere in aquatic conditions, fresh or marine waters. Protozoa are responsible for the many diseases in human beings, for example, as malaria, plasmodium, sleeping sickness, triposoma, etc. Antamoeba histolytica infects the large intestine of men, causing amoebic dysentery in which the faces are blood stained. Trypanosoma is transmitted by the blood sucking fly called C. cis fly. It causes sleeping sickness in men, which is disease characterized by unconsciousness of a person for a prolonged period of time. Plasmodium has an interesting way of living in two hosts, one in the body of men and the other in the body of mosquitoes, especially in the female of a variety of mosquito known as Anopheles. A female Anopheles bites a man and injects plasmodium into the blood. Plasmodium, which is sickle shaped, grows upon red blood cells in men and also undergoes asexual reproduction. Many blood cells are affected this way, and the man suffers from malaria. Another female Anopheles mosquito may bite a sick person, sucking blood cells full of plasmodium. Thus, plasmodium gets into the body of a mosquito where it reproduces sexually, multiplies in number and comes into the salivary glands. They are again injected through saliva into the body of a healthy man when the mosquito bites. Culturing of microorganisms. Microorganisms can be both useful and harmful to man. Therefore, it became imperative for scientists to culture them and learn more about them. In order to culture microorganisms, the two conditions required are optimum temperature and a proper nutrient medium. The nutrient medium used normally is agar-agar, 
which is obtained from kelps or it is prepared using potato tubers to prepare an effective nutrient medium potatoes are boiled and allowed to cool they are caused to obtain a paste some agar gel along with little glucose is added to this paste in a suitable ratio the mixture obtained is perfect for culturing microorganisms in the laboratory at room temperature nitrogen cycle nitrogen is an important constituent of proteins proteins are the body building foods and they are also an important constituents of nucleic acids the carriers of the genetic information from one generation to the next nitrogen is required for growth and development of most living organisms and although it forms 78% of air by volume but it cannot be utilized directly it has to be transformed into nitrogen rich compounds before it can be used the different ways used to fix nitrogen in gaseous state back into the atmosphere on decomposition of nitrogenous compounds make up the global nitrogen cycle the nitrogen cycle involves three steps nitrogen fixation nitrification and denitrification the nitrogen fixation involves fixing of the atmospheric nitrogen into simple nitrogenous compounds like ammonia and oxides of nitrogen under the action of atmospheric factors like lightning or by simple living organisms like free living nitrogen fixing bacteria during lightning nitrogen combines with oxygen to form nitric oxide nitrogen combines with hydrogen to form ammonia nitrogen fixation also occurs in the root nodules of leguminous plant pulses the bacteria like the rhizobium living symbiotically in them the nitrification by bacterial action helps to transform these simple nitrogenous compounds into nitrates which are used by plants to synthesize proteins so students there is another activity for you all so the aim of this activity is to observe the roots of legume plant for nodules so materials required are a legume plant water razor or blade slide and microscope procedure visit a field in winter and dig out a legume plant like pea bean etc wash off the soil and observe the nodules make a thin section of the nodules with a sharp blade or razor observe the section under high magnification of the microscope draw the structure of bacteria visible inside the nodule observation and conclusion bacteria inside nodules are rod shaped they reside in the nodule they convert atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogenous compounds used by plants so these are the two pictures the first picture is showing root of a leguminous plant showing nodules and the second picture is showing ts of a root nodule animals depend on plant proteins to meet their protein requirements when these protein and other nitrogenous produces are released as excretory products they undergo either decomposition or denitrification decomposition replenishes the soil with simple nitrogen compounds whereas denitrification results in the release of nitrogen in gaseous state back in the atmosphere uses of nitrogen in manufacture of chemical fertilizers like urea ammonium sulfate and ammonium nitrate in packaging of the food stuff like potato chips it keeps that food fresh in the manufacture of explosive like nitroglycerin and trinitrotoluene tnt harmful microorganisms a variety of microorganisms harms us by causing diseases spoiling our food and food crops and damaging our clothes papers and leather goods now students it's time for readers digest so the cosmopolitan microscopic organisms are called microorganisms microorganisms have been classified into five groups viruses bacteria protozoa algae and fungi the knowledge about microorganism has widened with the development in the optical instruments like microscope and electron microscope bacteria are both 
useful and harmful to men. Algae are chlorophyllous plants classified into three types. The green algae, red algae and brown algae. Fungi are a chlorophyllous plants. They vary in their structure and help in decomposition of dead and organic matter. So students, it's time to take your leave. So bye, we'll meet in the next class.